Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the course of this video lesson, I'll be solving different practice questions that cut across different topics in chemistry. Now, let's get into the first practice question. And it says, the shape of carbon 4 oxide molecule is, remember, the chemical formula for carbon 4 oxide is CO2. So, they're asking us, what is the shape of this molecule called CO2? So how do we determine the shape? Actually, the shape of carbon 4 oxide is linear. But it is not just by knowing that carbon 4 oxide is linear. You have to know why carbon 4 oxide is linear. You know, linear for linear means straight line. Are you getting me now? You know, for something to be linear, it means that it is in a straight line. So what does it mean for this compound, carbon 4 oxide, to be linear? Now, it's actually very easy. You have to understand what we call Lewis structure. Lewis was the man that brought about the concept of acid and base and, and some other concepts in chemistry. So you have to know the Lewis structure of this particular molecule called carbon 4 oxide CO2. Now, if you observe, it is between two elements, carbon and oxygen. So we have to remember introductory chemistry, how to write the diagrammatic representation of elements. Now, if you check now, it is between carbon and also it is between what? Oxygen. Very easy. Now let's walk towards it and let's solve this question together. Now you already know that carbon and oxygen are part of the first 20 elements. So what number is carbon? Now let's count. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. Carbon is number six. Okay. Where that oxygen? So let's go again. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. So oxygen is what? Number eight. So on this, what do we do next? We have to draw the diagrammatic representation, those, you know, circular diagram. So for this, you know, they are called shells, actually, you know, an atom. Let's draw the diagrammatic rep representation showing the atom and the electrons filling the shell for each of the elements. You know, the element should have the first shell. This first shell, they call it the K-shell. This is the K-shell as well. Are you following me? So this is the nucleus, which is centrally located. Are you following me now? So moving further, what do we do next? Remember, the, it means that both of them, now for carbon, it has six electrons. Oxygen has eight electrons. Hope you understand. It's very easy. Okay, you know, you have to understand the concept of, you know, atomic structure, understand the concept of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So I'm telling you now that carbon here has six electrons. Oxygen here has what? how many electrons? Eight electrons. So these are the electrons we have to fill in into this you know, diagram we're about drawing. So this is the first shell. The first shell occupies a maximum number of two electrons. So out of the six electrons here, I'm going to put two electrons first. So this is the maximum number of electrons that are occupied. Whereby any other shell to be drawn will then occupy eight electrons. That's the maximum number of electrons that the shell can occupy. Uh, 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 any shell that is after the K shell. This is called the L shell. Are you following me now? So let's do for oxygen as well here. So we've drawn the two electrons. So if you observe for carbon, how many electrons are remaining? We've drawn two. Remaining just four electrons. So what do we do next? We fill in and they are going to be in pairs. So here is two. Uh, so it's going to be two, four, six. So carbon is co complete. Hope you understand what I just did. It's simple. This is the L shell. We are back for this remaining six electrons. This is the L shell too. And I said that it's going to occupy eight. The maximum number it should occupy is like eight. So here it's going to be uh, one, two, one, two, four, six, eight. Okay. But I, I can draw one if here was 10. Hope you understand the point. This L shell can occupy eight. Any other one that uh, I should draw next should occupy eight. That's the maximum number. Don't put any other electron further than eight electrons in shells that are after the K shell. Hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm just trying to go back to the introductory chemistry so you tend to understand the concept very well. So on this, what do we do next? How do we draw the level structure of carbon four oxide to actually show that it is linear? It is simple. Now, moving further, looking at the compound CO2, you can see that it is between, it is between uh, one carbon atoms and two atoms of what oxygen. So how do we draw the level structure? Very easy. First of all, with this information, I then take out carbon. And if you observe, how I many electrons was found in the outermost shell? Four electrons. So look at what I want to fill in the four electrons using the Lewis structure pattern. Okay, so one now we know they are in pairs. 
So we're going to have the two electrons here and another two electrons here. Just watch. It is extremely very easy. You can see what I just did. So this is the Lewis structure for carbon specifically. This is carbon. Why, uh, why is that joint like this? Because carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell. So these are the four electrons. I'm not going to use this inside. You get what I'm saying? It's actually very easy. So let's walk towards the other oxygen. I'm going to put one of the oxygen here and put another oxygen here. Just watch. It is extremely easy. Remember, we have two oxygen. So let's walk towards just one oxygen first. So if you observe, how many electrons are found in the outermost shell of one oxygen? Uh, two, four, six. So six electrons. So I'm going to definitely put you know, two electrons here because you know that these electrons are the ones that will form the bonds. It's very easy. These electrons are what will form what the bonds between the elements. So I'm, I'm filling two electrons. So I'm going to put another here, two electrons, so making it four. So where I can set to put two here or even two here. So let's just put it here, two electrons. So for one of the oxygen, how many electrons have we formed? Eight electrons. Are you getting the point? So we've written the eight electrons. So for the other oxygen atom, I think we're going to do the same thing because it's same oxygen. So two electrons here, make, another two electrons here, making it four electrons. Lastly, two electrons, making it eight electrons. So if you observe, the next thing we do is to not connect the, uh, the, the atoms. You can see I've connected. You can see I've connected as well. You can see I've connected here. So this, if you observe now, you can see that the compound, the way they are drawn is in a straight line. So we simply call it linear. So the shape of this molecule should be linear. If you observe what I just did, it's actually easy. The, the, the angle between carbon and oxygen, or carbon and oxygen, oxygen carbon is 180 because it's a straight line now. So if you observe, if they're not asking, what should be the bond angle? What should be the bond angle of, you know, this particular compound CO2? You simply say 180 because of the, you know, it is, it's, it's in a straight line. So you simply say that the bond angle is what 180. I believe you understand how the level structure was drawn to determine the answer to be what now linear it's extremely very easy okay so let's move over to the next practice question to have more understanding about chemistry calculations and solving all of these type of questions i already have them on the chemistry masterpiece okay which is calculations and keynotes in chemistry so if you are preparing to write the jam exam this book is very very important for you now for more information getting the chemistry masterpiece do well to direct message me via my whatsapp number it will be on the screen